Without a doubt, Blackmagic's pocket cinema cameras, both the 4K and 6K versions, have been one of the most popular and accessible dedicated video cameras of the past decade. They're an affordable, powerful, small body camera that in the right hand is capable of producing some stunning imagery. Not only are both versions versatile in the types of content that they're suited for, but if you've had some experience with other filmmaking cameras, then these should be pretty easy to operate. Yes, with a lot of similar cameras in this area, they do need some rigging to really get the most out of them. As standard, things like battery life and storage really do take a battering if you're wanting to capture anything serious, which is why mine looks like this. Before I get started, I will just state that in the time of recording this, the firmware of the camera is 7.3, so if yours is different, there might be some slight changes to what the system looks like or how it operates. Now back onto the operation of the unit. If we ignore all of the added extras and focus on the core component of the body and lens, I'll take you through the ins and outs of the system. Starting with the body, the external buttons and controls are pretty minimal. From the top, there's a good solid on and off switch with an indicating LED next to it. This tells you the status of the camera for charging, recording, or being on or off. Directly next to that are three custom function buttons, which I'll discuss in detail a little later. And finally, there are a few buttons towards the front of the camera on the grip. There are two physical record buttons on the camera. There's one on the top of the grip, and also one between the grip and the lens mount. These are used to trigger the start and stop recording function. On the grip, there's also a stills capture button and three settings buttons, one for ISO, one for shutter speed, and one for white balance. There's also a scroll wheel located just below the record button too. On the rear of the camera is the camera's huge rear touchscreen. The screen is a five inch 1080 screen, though on both the 4K and 6K models, these don't tilt or move at all. But if you upgrade to the 6K Pro, this gives you a very angle screen. To the right of the screen are six individual buttons. The top is the aperture button. Just below that is a focus button, which can help when using AF lenses. On the slightly raised section is the HFR button, and depending on how you set it up, will allow you to switch between frame rates, for example, 25 and 50 frames. Next is a live magnification button, which will help you when manually focusing. The button with the three small lines is how you access the menu, and the play button gives you access to replay all of your shot clips in camera. As well as these physical buttons, the monitor, as mentioned, is a touchscreen, and various part of the screen will bring up additional options when using the camera. And we'll go through these now. In the top left corner is this small box. Pressing this brings up a guides menu. The first option is zebras and the percentage at which you want them to show on the monitor. Zebras will show you areas of your image that are overexposed and where data will likely be lost due to clipping. The second option is focus peaking. This is designed to show you what parts of your frame are in focus. In this case, this is shown by a red outline of the in-focus subjects. This can be set to one of three strengths, low, medium, or high. Within the main menu, you can also adjust the color of the outline too, which we'll cover later. The next one along is aspect ratio guides. With this on, the camera still captures the whole frame that is set within the menu, but gives you some guidance as to what is in the active frame based on the ratio you'd want your output to be. The nine box icon is the next option. This gives you a couple of items that you can bring onto your rear screen. First is a thirds guide that can help you with composition. Next is a center marker where you have three options, horizon, crosshair, or dot. Dot gives you a single center point, which can help with setting up your shot whilst being unintrusive. The crosshair gives you a slightly larger icon to work with and would be better for busier frames, but my personal choice is horizon. This gives you a cross in the center for framing, but also shows you if your angle isn't balanced. For example, if you're shooting up or down at a subject, or if your camera is tilted to one side. The next option is safe guides, and again, these sizes can be changed in the menu based on the guide area that you want to set. The final option is false color. False color is used to more accurately show how each part of the scene is exposed and to what degree over or under. If you're really wanting to learn more about getting exposures correct, then using this will really help. So read up and gather an understanding of what the colors mean. Back onto the main screen, from left to right is the frame rate, shutter speed or shutter angle, iris or aperture, ISO, white balance and tint for the white balance. Pressing either of these gives you a quick access to change them, whatever setting you need. In the center top is the time code, 
This is either continuous or clip based and can be synced with other cameras with an external unit. Finally on the far right is the battery life or power indicator. Due to me using the external battery, this reads as either AC or current voltage. Also on the screen, you may notice a little indicator that says LUT. This tells you if and when you're using and previewing a LUT on the rear screen. Dropping down to the bottom of the screen, on the left is the histogram. This gives you an RGB and luminance readout of your exposure. Depending on your subject, typically you'd want this to be quite balanced across the scope, with nothing peeking out of the top. Earlier I mentioned there are two physical buttons on the camera for recording. There's also a record button on the screen, which will also trigger the recording. The next two segments are the media space. This indicates how much recording time you have left, as well as the media name or numbering. And the final item on the screen are the audio bars. These will show you where your audio levels are at and can be adjusted for either channel and for the speaker output too. That's the screen and most of the exterior covered. We'll now take a walk through the menu itself and how to set up your BMPCC. Again, this is the 6K model, so some options will differ from the 4K version. When you head into the main menu, you'll see the menu options across the top of Record, Monitor, Audio, Setup, Presets, and LUTs. We'll go from left to right on these and start with Record. The menu system in the Black Magic range has to be the easiest to navigate and operate. Nice and clear options and select points across their entire range. In the Record menu, you have two main options. Blackmagic RAW or ProRes. These are the main codecs for the camera and will have a massive effect on what you're able to do with the footage in post. The sub options in both of these have a huge part to play on the data rates and information captured too. Both options give you sub options for recording quality. So it's worth looking at what you're recording onto, the data rate it can handle, the output you're aiming to create, and also the storage you have attached to your edit station. All the information you need on data rates, compression, and format differences can be found in the camera's manual. So that's worth looking at before you start your first project. With my content, I opt for raw, constant quality, and mostly Q3, though I do dip to Q5 and occasionally up to Q1, but that's not very common. Q3 gives me enough of a reduction in file size that it's not unmanageable to store and back up. But for almost all web-based outputs, Q5 is more than adequate. After that, you have the resolution of what you're capturing. You'll notice on the options that when you select different options, it says, that the sensor is windowed. Basically, in RAW, you can only use the whole sensor in maximum resolution. Otherwise, you're cropping your image. So effectively, you're using a portion of the sensor that is the size of the resolution you wish to capture, and this gives you a crop on the lenses you're using too. In RAW, you're also unable to shoot UHD 4K and HD. These options are, however, in ProRes using the entire sensor. If you hit the little arrow on the right side, this takes you to the second page of the record menu. The first line is dynamic range. These options slightly vary the range, but my preference is using film. In RAW, the sensor area is fixed to 6K, but this can be changed if you set your camera to ProRes. Below that is the project frame rate. Now typical for the UK is 25 frames, but you can set this to whatever you need for your project. Next to that is a toggle switch for off-speed filming. Switching this to the on position allows access to the next part, which is the off-speed frame rate. I always set this to double my frame rate for standard setting. This means that when filming, I can press the HFR button and it will switch from 25 frames to 50, giving me the options for slower motion footage. Once that is set, I'll toggle the switch to the off position again. And at the bottom of the page is your media preference, which is always an external drive as that's what I shoot to. And finally, something you should always have switched on is the option to stop recording if there are dropped frames. Meaning, if your media isn't fast enough and at least one frame is dropped due to higher bitrate, then the recording stops. This avoids the issue of getting into the edit and finding the footage is choppy or unusable because of poor media choices. The third page on record gives you options for time-lapse capture. Whether you want detail sharpening and the level, and if you want to apply the LUT to your footage, this last option should almost always be off. The next option in the main menu is the monitor. Here you can set up various options for both internal and external monitors. These are changed through the LCD, HDMI, or both submenus. On LCD and HDMI, you have the toggles for the various visual options that we discussed earlier, such as peaking, zebras, and frame guides. 
If you're recording to an external monitor, then on the HDMI page, you'll want to have clean feed as on and display 3D LUT as off. The second page of LCD gives you additional options with screen brightness and whether you want audio meters or codec and resolution on the screen. Whereas the second page of HDMI allows you to pick if they are cinematographers, so the camera operator, focus puller or DOP, or for director or producer. And this changes the type of information sent to the external display, which is particularly important and useful to get right for the right person. If you go to the both tab, then you have further options for your frame guides. Their opacity, the type, level, and color of your focus assist, and the zebra levels. And on the second page of this, you have options for customizing your grids, your safe guides, and the option for de-squeeze if you're shooting with anamorphic lenses. Next in the main menu is your audio options. On page one, you can choose the source of each channel using either internal mics, either mono or left or right, or using external mics via the 3.5 mil or mini XLRs, then you can pick the levels of each channel. There are level bars in the center to make sure your audio is coming through and at the right levels. The second page gives you controls for headphone and internal speaker volumes, as well as the options for phantom power for your XLR mic. And finally, cut for your peak program meters for audio. The setup menu is for the initial setup of the camera. Going through this allows you to change options such as the date and time of your camera, the language for the menu system, and your preference for shutter angle or shutter speed, and your frequency setting, which is based on your location. The second page of this is where you can customize your on-camera function buttons on top of your camera. You can choose if you want the button to toggle on and off for certain options, or if you want it to recall a preset that you can set up, such as frame rate, white balance, or shutter speed. All of mine are set to toggle between certain options, such as turning my LUT on and off for both my LCD and HDMI, turning frame guides on and off, or seeing a completely clean feed. The third page gives you access to the tally light controls, as well as power saving options for dimming your display. You can also see your hardware ID and what software you're running on, and your playback options as well. Page four is your connectivity for Bluetooth. Bluetooth on this camera allows you to connect with a compatible app, which gives you control over certain settings and to start and stop recording. And the final page of setup is for resetting the camera, pixel mapping if you have any dead pixels, and it also gives you the calibration options for the camera's motion sensor and LCD white balance. In the presets page, you can build presets based on your common use cases. Adding these is easy to set your camera up to how you want to use it. So that's all of the settings on all of the pages and includes aperture, shutter, ISO, white balance, frame guides, pretty much anything that can be changed on camera. Then head to this presets page, hit the plus, input the name of it and save it. And the final page on the camera is the LUTs page. LUTs or lookup tables are a quick preview way of seeing how your footage will look, not in RAW. Most of these are classed as base LUTs or starting points and help you to see what your final output might look like. If you need to, you can import LUTs onto the camera for you to preview your footage. Now these can be pre-made or purchased LUTs and can be imported via SD card, CFast or external drives. Well, I hope you found the system walkthrough for the 6K useful. If you do have any other questions about the camera or any other Blackmagic product, then do drop a message in the comments and the team at WEX will get back to you. Thanks for watching.